Hello class, um, today we're going to be reviewing over chapters 4 and 5 to prepare for the chapter 4 5 quiz. So day one we went over the history of the cell and the introduction to the cell. So part one here, question one, describe the three parts of the cell theory. All living things are made of cells. The cell is the basic unit of life. And number three, cells can only come from other cells. Now you may want to look back over Leeuwenhoek and Hook and Schleiden and Schwann and Virchow and what they did. You're not going to need to know dates, but just kind of look back over what they did and how they uh, determined these three parts of the cell theory. So explain how cells are diverse in shape and size. Um, shape determines function. And the shape of the cell will determine what type of function it has. So as an example, um, skin cells are flat to cover the body. Um, red blood cells are round to be able to fit through the um, through the blood vessels. So those are just a couple examples. Now cell size, size um, will relate to cell surface area and volume. So cells must remain small in order to carry out all of their functions. Um, and so the surface area to volume ratio must stay low in order for the functions to be carried out. If you think back to, we did a lab um, with the potato and food coloring, and you could review back over that a little bit, um, but the food coloring went all the way through or almost all the way through the small cell, but barely entered the large cell. Uh, it might have traveled the same exact distance, but the large cell had so much more work to do in order to get the food coloring all the way in that that cell would likely die if it was too large. Okay, moving on to internal organization. Explain the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. So prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus. They do not have membrane-bound organelles, so no organelles. They do have DNA. It's just not in a nucleus. Some examples of prokaryotic cells are bacteria. Not all bacteria, but some bacteria. Eukaryotic cells have a nucleus and they have organelles. And examples of that would be multicellular organisms like us. What three things do all eukaryotic cells have? A cell membrane, a nucleus, and membrane-bound organelles. What is meant by selectively permeable when talking about the cell membrane? This gets us into chapter 5 a little bit, but just initially in chapter 4, we talked about that definition, and it just means that it allows some things in and some things out. It's kind of like a security guard, and they only let the things in or out that are supposed to go in or out. Describe the parts of the cell membrane. So these, you're going to need to go back and look at your chart um, and go over all of those. Make sure you understand. Uh, you need to know function and be able to identify the parts of the cell. And you have all of those. Um, define organelles. Organelles are mini organs. And they're, um, they each have a specific function
and their purpose is to help maintain homeostasis within a cell. So they have a specific function that has to be um, done within that cell in order for the cell to live. Okay, organelles. Be able to identify the 11 main organelles. Again, go back to your um, chart for that. I'm not going to go over every one of them here. Um, be able to explain each of these 11 organelles' functions. Again, go back to the chart for that. Everybody should have that done. And if you need to review over that, you can go back to the video on that. Um, what organelles do plants have that animals do not have? So plants have a cell wall that maintains structure for the cell. They have a central vacuole that holds water and waste, mainly water. And they have a chloroplast, which is the site of photosynthesis. Okay, homeostasis in a cell, this leads us into chapter five. How does the cell membrane help the cell maintain homeostasis? Well, homeostasis, going back over that word, is a stable internal environment and so the cell membrane itself, if we were to look at this, will um, be selectively permeable to let some things in and out based on um, what will help maintain homeostasis. So kinetic theory, kinetic means energy motion and the idea behind this is that all particles are moving and they're going to cross the membrane or bounce off the membrane. So they're going to be moving either way and they're going to move until something stops them. So passive transport, um, we have five questions here. Define the concentration gradient and all that is is looking at the solute concentration on both sides of the cell membrane. Um, what is diffusion and how is osmosis similar and different than diffusion? So diffusion is the um, things crossing the membrane going from high to low. So um, from high to low concentration, it's passive transport, no ATP. Just as a reminder, osmosis is diffusion of water. That's all it is, diffusion of water. Um, explain equilibrium. So we'll start there. Equilibrium is just equal concentrations on both sides of the membrane. and how it relates to movement of particles. Right here, particles still move. They still cross the membrane, it's just in equal amounts. Define and explain hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic as it relates to the cell. We're going to start with isotonic these are all osmosis and isotonic is equilibrium. Water still crosses the membrane but it does so in equal amounts. Okay, hypotonic, let's start there, hypotonic is when the solute concentration is big inside the cell. inside. So what happens? 
water rushes in. And it causes a few terms that you'll need to know here. Cytolysis is one that goes with this, and that's cell death. And also turgor pressure, which is in plants. So you do need to know those words. You did this with the um, potato lab, and with that one, you would have it in plain water, and water rushed in, and it made the cells expand. It made the um, the potato really hard and um, uh, just thicker almost. It just made it gained weight. Okay, hypertonic. If we look at that down here, we'll start down here. In hypertonic, the solute concentration. is high outside the cell. Water rushes out and it causes plasmolysis which is wilting. Or dehydration, you could just say. Water rushes out so it's dehydrated. You definitely need to know these, so make sure you look back over those. What is the difference between facilitated diffusion and diffusion through ion channels? So ion channels, we'll start there. Ion channels are specific to an ion. An ion is just a charged atom. So some examples are Na plus 1, Cl minus 1, potassium plus 1. And so they're specific to one of those ions. Um, they let things go through uh, based on going from high to low concentrations, but they're specific to that particular ion. And then facilitated diffusion, this one here, we'll bring that down here. Facilitated diffusion is specific to a type of molecule. Again, still from high to low concentration, but just specific to something that can cross through. It's like going through that crosswalk. They have to be able to cross, but they can't do it on their own, so they get help by going through a protein. Active transport. Um, define active transport. That's going to be using energy to cross the membrane what is the energy molecule called ATP um, explain the process of the sodium potassium pump so anytime that it's a pump um, it, is cons it is using energy um, and basically it's just sending sodium and potassium to the opposite directions and they naturally want to go. So um, it tries, diffusion gets it to equilibrium, but the body, the cells don't like sodium and potassium at equilibrium. Instead, they're going to pump them to the direction that they want them. So this is a constant process. It has to work all the time. And then endocytosis is the cell eating. And exocytosis is the cell, I guess you could say, throwing up, if you want to put it that way. Um, things, large things entering or leaving. So large items enter, large items exit. And this one had pinocytosis which is drinking, it's fluids, and phagocytosis is eating. Okay, and that is the review for chapters 4 and 5. Make sure you take time to study all of these terms and spend a special um, extra time on that osmosis, those hypotonic, hypertonic, isotonic.